What's going on, guys? It is the week two wild recap, a week filled with highs and lows. Let's get to the news, the highs of the week first. Top quarterback play continued as Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Cam Newton, Josh Allen, and Kyler Murray all had huge games. And, oh, look, Eric owns two of these guys. Uh, so huge quarterback play from those guys. Aaron Jones continues to put up another huge performance, as well as Alvin Kamara. Uh, several players putting up in, like, the mid-20s. Uh, so that was pretty awesome to see. And craziest thing, tight ends went off this week. And not the tight ends that you would necessarily think. Tyler Higby had three touchdowns. Jonu Smith had two touchdowns. Jordan Reed, who wasn't even owned, had two touchdowns. And Travis Kelsey had 90 yards and a touchdown. So uh, they were some of the top scorers this week when it came to the receivers. Now comes the lows of the week. There was carnage everywhere, all over the field. 49ers had five players go down in this week's game. And two of them are out for the season. Two of their biggest studs on the defense. Now, here's a list of people who are now out for the season. Saquon Barkley and Cortland Sutton. I noticed that Cortland Sutton's already been dropped. Here are players who are out at least three weeks. At least three weeks. Some of them are out for like four to six weeks. Drew Locke, Christian McCaffrey, Le'Veon Bell, Philip Lindsay, Tevin Coleman, Paris Campbell, and Tyrod Taylor comes in with a collapsed lung. I don't know if you guys heard about this story. Takes a pain injection before the game to deal with a rib injury and ends up with a collapsed lung minutes before the start of the game. Justin Herbert, rookie quarterback, has to step in there and performs beautifully. Uh, that was a crazy, crazy game. Fantastic game. Looking at just the games overall, there were some really killer games, but we'll get to that later. Here are the players that are now week to week. Raheem Mostert, Mostert, Ma, 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 Mustart, I don't know. Devontae Adams, Sammy Watkins, Sterling Shepard, Jimmy G, Rashad Perryman, and some guy named Dawson Knox. I don't know who he is. Players who are day-to-day, -day, Cam Akers and Will Fuller. Will Fuller, I feel like, is always day-to-day. -day. Um, so huge hits this week. That doesn't include people who are already hurt, already on IR, already coming into the game hurt and banged up like Michael Thomas and A.J. Brown. So brutal, brutal week. Here are some of the teams that were heavily impacted just from this week's injuries. Mad Dogs had three guys go down. Uh, this league is a breeze. Had two guys go down, plus Kittle was out for the week. Now, just so happens, though, he happens to own Devontae Freeman, who, just so happens, is going to be replacing the injured Saquon Barkley, who Breeze owns. How serendipitous. Hmm. Nicely done there, Zach. Tons of Anarchy had two guys go down. Check Casher had two guys go down. The Walking Dez had two guys go down. In fact, the only teams not impacted this week by injury were Don't Panic and Thunder Blender. Lucky you guys. Now, looking at this week's recap, man, watching some of those NFL games was so much fun. Some amazing games. The Chargers having the worst coaches unknown to man losing to the Chiefs in overtime. Uh, there was... The Atlanta choke artist Falcons giving up a massive lead and, and what, three scores in the final two minutes? Are you kidding me? Three unanswered scores in the final two minutes, including a the world's weirdest onside kick. I don't know how you don't fall on that thing. I don't know what that was. He just, like, floated it over there. Um, what were some other great games? Uh, the Seahawks and the Patriots had a fantastic game. Uh, and I know my dad would be so upset at me if I did not mention the Raiders' home opener last night and their huge win against the Saints. Um, I'm pretty sure the Saints went out partying the night before because they did not look good. I mean, like half of the Saints' defense just getting ran over uh, was not good. Um, and Derek Carr, I think, sold his soul to the devil because that was not Derek Carr playing quarterback. I don't know who that was, but that was not Derek Carr. He had a great game. Um, so it was fantastic games this week all around. Now, weekly recap for VFL. Uh, MFCEO beats this league as a breeze thanks to Kittle being out and Barkley getting hurt. This league is a breeze goes to 0-2. Oh Apparently this league is not a breeze for you, Zach. You need to change your name, like, immediately. It's just, it's, it's getting ironic at this point after an 0-2 oh start. Um, MFCEO, myself, one of three undefeated teams to start the season. Met. 
Mad Dogs beat Don't Panic despite having two players with zero points. You know, what? Like Mad Dogs wins and they had two players with zero points? How did they do that? They had Aaron Jones. No said. Walking Dez lets the defending champs, Chet Casher, just walk all over their Dez body. Uh, with the exception of Josh Allen, the Walking Dez entire team underperformed. Chet Casher starts out strong, 2-0. Uh, defending champs. Uh, not a good start for the rest of the league. Uh, tons of anarchy. Rex Thunder Blender. Uh, 155 to 109 in a big payday for Tons of Anarchy. And aside from his kicker, only one player scored less than 17 points for Tons of Anarchy. That's just crazy. So they move up to 2-0. Uh, Horn Dogs take the rookie to the woodshed and beat Batman. Uh, Batman had two veteran wide receivers. Julio Jones and A.J. Green both combined for five points. Ugh, it's gross. Both teams are now 1-1. One and, one. and Steve Largent blew up Habanos. I think John took offense to me calling him out last week because now he goes from the, having the worst score in the league to having the best score in the league. Uh, so that great job there turning it around, John. The scariest part of his 158-point victory, it could have been 176 points. Like he could have had even more points. So that's terrifying. Um, Habanos falls to 0-2. When we look at the power rankings this week, in a huge fall from grace, Zach started out the season as the top team and has fallen into the abyss, going from the best possible team to the worst team. Uh, Habanos and Mad Togs also have huge falls from grace. Uh, five, they lose at least five spots since the beginning of the season. Um, and then the biggest jump goes to Don't Panic, moving from eighth to first in the power rankings. So when we look ahead at next week's games, I have to face the top-ranked team, don't panic, in a next-gen battle. Mad Dogs is facing some big roster dilemmas between injuries and having two inconsistent quarterbacks as they take on an underperforming The Walking Dez. In a David versus Goliath, the 0-2, this league is a breeze, takes on the undefeated reigning champs, Chet Casher. Thunder Blender is facing Batman and Dobbins as both teams are trying to move into the positive win percentage column. But I helped out Thunder Blender because he no longer has to make the choice between which of my two top scoring quarterbacks do I start. In a blockbuster trade he made with yours truly, he now actually gets a performing starting running back, which I don't think he even had on his team. So you're welcome, Eric. And then two old friends face each other as the 0-2 Habanos try to end the the Tons of Anarchy's winning streak. Tons of Anarchy is looking to spend big on the waiver wire tonight to fill the void that Christian McCaffrey is going to leave them for the next four to six weeks. And then finally, two top scorers from week two face off in what could be the battle of bruisers as the ghost of Steve Largent takes on the Horn Dogs. As always, guys, get your waiver bids in tonight, and good luck to everyone, unless you live in Las Vegas. See ya.